Right, let us return now to those protests in Belarus. And I'm joined by Professor Elena Korostoleva, who's director of the Global Europe Centre at the University of Kent and an expert in Belarusian politics. She joins us from Canterbury in England. Professor, thank you very much for being with us on BBC News. Let us begin, if we may, with these protests today. Do you think public support for the protests is growing or will President Lukashenko's uh, opponents be worried that kind of the longer this drags on, more people will think, well, the status quo is going to survive and therefore some of that support could slip away. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. The protest is growing and we can see it's the third consecutive week. And what we see now, actually, we could call it defiance for which Belarus has been known since the Second World War, because people simply have nothing else to lose but their own dignity. The economy now is in a free fall. People are being imprisoned, murdered, tortured, raped. So there is no way back. There is only way forward. Uh, that, uh, and yet the protesters say they are going to do so peacefully. But if the intimidation, the violence continues on the part of the security forces, how on earth can you avoid a confrontation? Well, until now, and I'm sure it will continue in the next coming weeks, all the protests have been by far very peaceful and very orderly. Even the streets, the protesters leave the streets very clean and tidy. This is precisely to show that this is an internal matter that should be solved only internally with no interference from any other forces, including, of course, from the bigger neighbor, Russia. And it is not, no, not anti-Russian and it is not pro-Western. It is anti-regime only. Uh, this regime, though, will not deal with, well, for a start, there are a group of opposition leaders who have obviously been forced out of the country. Those that are left in the, what they call themselves the Coordination Council, President Lukashenko has said, I'm not going to talk to these people. I mean, again, is it possible then, let me put this another way, that there are other mm -hmm. contacts going on below the level of the president that give the opposition reason to be optimistic that something could change? Well, first of all, um, the opposition is not, you know, uh, it, it, it is counted in millions. And this is uh, very important. If I were to quote one of the members of the Coordination Council, he said that we're not opposition, we're the majority. And that's what makes us strong and united. And the, the, the function of actually of the Coordination Council is simply to, to pave the way towards medi uh, mediated uh, uh, talks uh, in order to ensure that new elections, transparent and pre-election, will be held in the near future in order to ensure orderly transfer of power. Uh, let me ask you finally and briefly, how long do you think Prof uh, President Lukashenko has left? Well, I think he's, he, he has already wasted all his political legitimacy, so the only way forward for him is obviously through the force. So therefore, I really hope that the international community uh, through OSCE mediators uh, will uh, help um, Lukashenko come to, to, to his senses in order to ensure that there will be free elections soon in order to avoid bloodshed in the country. Professor Elena Korosteleva from the University of Kent, thank you very much for being with us on thank BBC you. World News. Professor there referring to the OSCE, that's the Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which is a sort of body that involves lots of European countries and often uh, plays a role in these kinds of situations. Now to the UK. We